Hey y'all, welcome to Restless Chipotle Kitchen. Today, we're gonna answer the question, what am I gonna take to the stupid office party? You know, all of those potlucks and office parties and just gatherings that happen during the fall and winter going into the holiday season. Well, they're probably gonna be a little different this year because, you know, social distancing, but you can make this cake as cupcakes. You can make it as a layer cake. You can make it as an easy one layer cake that travels really well. So whatever you happen to need, this pumpkin spice cake is gonna handle it. It's only got three essential ingredients, okay? Could not be easier. Let's go over to the kitchen and get started. Okay, y'all, this cake has only three main ingredients. Now I'm gonna add a few extras just because I like the flavor that it adds and I'll show you what they are, but you really only need three ingredients. So the first one is a spice cake mix, uh, any spice cake mix you like. And then you're gonna need solid pack pumpkin, not pumpkin pie filling, but make sure it says solid pack pure pumpkin puree on it. And honestly, that's the one I use. And then we're gonna need three eggs. Now for the cake, that's really all we need. But I like to add about a tablespoon of bourbon and a little extra ground cloves to give it a little more spicy flavor. You're also gonna wanna have some kind of topping, um, canned cream cheese frosting, homemade cream cheese frosting, um, sprinkle it with powdered sugar. There's all kind, you know, a little dollop of whipped cream. There's all kinds of ways to do this. I'm gonna put my homemade cream cheese frosting on it and you'll find that recipe on Restless Chipotle. So, the first thing we have to do, y'all, y'all are not gonna believe this, it's so easy. Um, really, I don't even need a mixer, just basically a spoon. The first thing is we're going to dump the spice cake mix into a big bowl. And the oven should be preheating at 350 degrees. Then, we're gonna take our pumpkin and put it right in there with the spice cake mix. Now, I know a lot of you don't like to use cake mixes and I do also have a um, cake mix recipe on Restless Chipotle. If you'd like to make your own cake mix and go from there, that's fine too. And then we're just gonna need to add our eggs before we start stirring it all up. So just crack the eggs in there. You don't have to do them one at a time or anything like that. This is not a fussy recipe at all. It's so simple. Get your eggs in there. And then I'm gonna put in my bourbon and my cloves. And I'm just gonna put about a fourth of a teaspoon in there. You can put more if you like or not put it at all if you don't like it. I love cloves. I like that spicy, warm flavor of them. Once you have everything in there, all you need to do is stir it up. Now I start with the eggs so that I can make sure that they get um, completely mixed up, completely blended. And so I'll usually start with a whisk, but this, um, batter gets very thick very fast. So I switch to a wooden spoon once I know that the eggs are in there and ready to be mixed in. You wanna get all of the cake mix blended in so that you don't have anything powdery on the sides or in there. You don't want any lumps or anything like that. Now see, this is a really thick batter. It's almost like a, a quick bread batter or maybe even a pound cake batter, very thick. But that's okay, because it's gonna do exactly what it needs to do. Now I'm going through and I'm trying to get, for some reason my cake mix had lumps in it, so I'm trying to get that out of there. 
One of the things that I like about this cake is because it's so easy, it's perfect for potlucks, church picnics, the office holiday parties, whatever. It takes about less than five minutes to put together. It takes about 30 minutes to bake, and then you can throw it in the car and take off with it, let it cool in the car, and put your frosting on it when you get where you're going, or just um, sprinkle it with powdered sugar. So. In the meantime, while I'm doing this, I've got the oven preheating to 350 degrees, and this is ready to go into our pan. So here's my 13 by nine inch pan. I'm just, and actually, I think it's a little bigger than the 13 by nine inch, but I'm just gonna spray it with cooking spray. Ooh, I'm almost out of it. So that it doesn't stick. And I'm just gonna spoon my batter into the pan. Once it's in the pan, I'm gonna smooth it out and so that it'll bake evenly or as evenly as possible. And then it'll go in my preheated oven for 30 to 40 minutes. The best way to tell if this is done is to just stick a toothpick in the middle and bring it back out. And if it's clean or just has a few crumbs clinging to it, it's done. And if it, if it streaks with batter, then you know it's not done. Cake is out of the oven and it's cooled. It smells so good in this kitchen. So the next thing that you're gonna do is put the frosting on. And you can use whatever kind of frosting that you want. This is my um, homemade cream cheese frosting and it's whipped and it's very light and fluffy. And that's what I like. But if you wanna use a can of frosting, go for it. And you know, the whole idea behind this is to keep it as easy as possible. You're gonna need, it depends on how thick you like frosting. I kinda of want mine thick. So you're gonna need at least one can of frosting, and if you like um, a lot of frosting on your cake, you're probably gonna want two. So maybe a total of four cups. Once you get your frosting on your cake, you're ready to go. But um, if you have time to let it chill in the refrigerator for an hour or so, uh, before you take it anywhere or serve it, it will cut much prettier and the frosting will be much prettier. And um, it's all about the pretty when it comes to that. There is no need to refrigerate this um, before serving. But if you want the slices to come out really pretty and the frosting to come out really pretty, then that's what you probably want to do. So I... I know some people like the frosting like really smooth and flat, but you know, I grew up with swirled frosting and I still think that the swirled frosting is prettiest. So I'll swirl that, kind of get it even so that they don't fight over the pieces that seem like they have the, more, the most frosting on it. And that is pretty much it. Now what I like to do is put these cute little pumpkins on top so you can just put them evenly spaced on top and that will also help figure out the uh, servings so that when somebody cuts it, they're gonna cut it so that the pumpkins are all in the middle. And that technically, technically should give you an even number of servings. Might not, I'm not great with measurement, but we'll see. And there it is. There's our cake. Looks delicious. I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator for uh, about an hour and I'll see y'all later. Here we are. The cake is cooled, it's frosted, it's got these cute pumpkins on it, but you know, you could use um, gingerbread crumb, not gingerbread crumbs. Ginger snap crumbs would be good on top of this. Graham cracker crumbs would be good on top of this. Um, just whatever way you wanna, you know, 
garnish it or if you don't want to use the frosting at all just sprinkle some powdered sugar over it or serve it with whipped cream whatever you want to do but you definitely want to try this let's cut into it and see what we've got i know what we've got it's gonna be good i can't cut straight i don't know about y'all but I never cut the pieces the right size. See, that probably should be a lot smaller than it is, but you know, we do what we do. All right, so here's the plate. Here's the cake. It's nice and firm because I've had it in the freezer. Mmm, look at that. Look at that color. Isn't it beautiful? Definitely pumpkin, definitely moist and delicious. Let's go over to the table. Wasn't that easy? Here's my giant piece of cake. It's got a, that beautiful color on it, beautiful kind of golden orange. The, um, the frosting that I used is the whipped cream cheese frosting from my banana cake, and that's on the blog. And it's linked to in this recipe on the blog. And it's creamy and just a little bit tangy. It goes with the sweetness, the spiciness of the pumpkin. But let's see how this tastes. This is incredibly good, y'all. It is full of pumpkin flavor. It's moist, it's tender. Mm, it's absolutely delicious and it's so easy. This is the answer to all of those get-togethers that you may or may not have this year, depending on, you know, social distancing. But even if you don't have big get-togethers, the cake is great. So it freezes well. So give it a try. You're going to love it. And I'll talk to y'all next week, okay? Love y'all. Bye-bye. <laughs>